Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Happy Easter. Uh, so I think our flowering of the cross has been completed. So let's turn it around and get a look at it. So beautiful. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, when, when we all bring something uh, bring an offering. Uh, beautiful things can come of that when they're joined with other offerings. So thank you uh, for, for that. Uh, we're going to have it over there in the corner for now. Uh, as After uh, our worship is over, uh, we're going to move it back to the middle. And if you'd like to get a, a, a photo with your family in, in front of that, you can, you can certainly do that. Um, and, and if you do, if you put it on social media, make sure you you tag us or you uh, check in here so that we can so we can see your family uh, photo. Uh, we're going to start here in just a few minutes. Let's see, where are we, Keith? We're ready to go. We're ready to go. Okay, we online too. We're ready. Okay, great. So, uh, if you're online, welcome. Really, really glad that you're here. In the comments section of the Facebook feed, you can find the order of service, the bulletin with all of the information you need for the service. Uh, welcome to all of you who are here. Uh, really glad that you are here this morning and hope that you have a terrific experience uh, worshiping the Lord and celebrating this day of resurrection. Uh, we're going to have our opening hymn. Uh, it's going to be hymn number 207. If you're here, everything you need will be up on the screens. Please stand and join us. Jesus Christ is 
of you who are looking for seats, there's some folding chairs on this side and there's a little bit of space up here in the front. Uh, probably the seats in the back, the folding seats in the back are what you're looking for. Hallelujah, <laughs> 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we'll sing our song of praise.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the apostle of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118. We will read the psalm in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel not proclaim his, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord is Lord. Let it be my hand be A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If, for this life only, we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, 
after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Let's stand and join in song as we sing hymn number 204, Now the Green Blade Riseth. According to Luke. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I like how that sounds. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And one more time. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You guys have no idea how wonderful that sounds. 
No idea. Or maybe you do. Maybe you do. First, welcome. Those of you who are here today, welcome. Maybe welcome back. I know that it feels like uh, Lent of 2020 never ended. <laughs> but maybe it's over today. Maybe it's over today. As we gather here together, as we look for seats. <laughs> as we sit with each other and give thanks to God for this great gift of resurrection. For this great gift of his son, for this great gift of life. Not just life eternal, although that's a big deal. But life, abundant life right now. Right in this moment. Simon Sinek is a author and leadership writer and speaker. He put out a TED talk about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more, 13 years ago, about motivation and inspiring people as a leader. And he says to start with why. Start with why. And I thought that was a good, that's a good idea. That we can start with why. Why resurrection? Why did God choose resurrection? as his penultimate way of giving us life, of showing his love. I suppose it has something to do with incarnation, with the reality that the son was willing to sacrifice sitting at the right hand of his father and to come to this place, this broken world, and to live your life and my life so that we can see what is possible, so that we can understand that we don't have to live with the brokenness, with the disappointments, with the loss, with the death that this world can bring because there's something more. As Paul tells us, that last enemy, death, is defeated in Christ Jesus. And if we die with Christ, we will rise with him. Maybe that's why God chose resurrection. Why? Here's another question. Maybe this, this might be pertinent for you. Why are you here? For some of you, I'm sure it's because this is just, it's Sunday. It's Sunday, so you're here. Because that's what you do on Sundays. For others of you, maybe on the other side, a higher power in your house said to get ready already because we're going to be late to church. You're going, so quit complaining. Not that that's ever been said at my house. <laughs> we all have different reasons for being here. The question is, what are we going to do with what happens here today? Why are you here? And why does that matter? Why does that matter? Why is resurrection important for me? That's a good question to ask yourself. Why is resurrection important to me? I can answer that question for myself. Resurrection is an invitation. The resurrection of Jesus is an invitation for me to stoop and look into the door of my life. 
Do you hear that in the gospel, Peter? That the, the, the male disciples, the guys, did not believe the women like that ever happens. They didn't believe him. But Peter got up and looked anyway, and he stooped in, right? Luke gives us a really clear picture of that. He stoops and looks in. Can you be curious enough to stoop and look into your life? And to see if you might say yes to this invitation to resurrection. To decide where in your life, where in my life. We need to start over again. We need to hit that reset button. We need to begin anew. To begin to step towards a new reality. To live a new life. What a great opportunity today. To think about what it would look like. To live a life of grace, generosity, and of consistent growth. What would it look like to live a life of grace? To live a life that is so full of grace. The first thing I think we need to do in order to do that is to consider God's mercy to us. How merciful, how graceful has God been to you and to me? Grace, the word grace in Greek is charis. And charis also means gift. Grace is a gift. How has God gifted you? Well, we can probably start on our fingers. And if we got going, we'd probably need each other's toes and fingers to count all the blessings in our lives, starting with our families, our friends, our work, our church. God has been so grace-filled towards us. God has gifted us so much. And there have been times in my life and probably in your life where we have experienced God's forgiveness, even though we didn't really deserve it. I am very grateful that I did not get what I deserved some days. And you probably should be, too. It's God's grace who gives us what we need, not what we deserve. So consider God's mercy to you. Consider God's forgiveness to you. Consider how you might share that with others. And what would it look like to live a life of generosity? Well, listen to what Paul said about Jesus, that God gave us Christ the first fruits the first fruits, the best, the best that God has to offer. God offered to us for us. And you and I can consider that God's character is to give for God so loved the world that he gave his son. And so what would it look like For you and I to live lives of generosity. And not just with our money. But with our lives. To be generous with our time. To give our time to each other. To be generous with that grace that we just talked about. To be generous with our love. To be generous with the talents that we have so that we can build up others. Consider what it would look like for you to give your first fruits the way that God gave his. 
and consider what it would, might look like to live a life of growing, of growth. See, I think that God gives us full agency to make choices to become fully who we have been created to be. God has wired you and me in a very unique ways, very unique ways. And God has given us what we need to be God's people in the world, to bring what only we can bring to the table, just like the flowers, to bring those gifts to God. And in bringing the gifts to God and sharing our gifts, we can learn how to be more and more who God has made us to be. And we can live and we can live with passion and power. And we can see and we can go to bed every night and know that we made a difference. That we, through our work, through our growing have made a different world. And God knows we need a different world right now. A world of grace and generosity. And as we grow in grace, as we grow in generosity, as we grow in understanding the love that God has for you and for me and for all people, then we can be the ones that reflect the joy and power of resurrection. That's why resurrection is important. And honestly, that's really why you're here. Because God wants to give you the gift of resurrection in your own life. God is calling you. No matter where you've gone, no matter how far you've wandered, no matter what you've done, God is calling you today to live life with him. To allow him to bring resurrection forth in your heart and your mind so that you can walk from this place, not as individuals, but as a community proclaiming the good news that Jesus is risen, that Jesus lives, and there is hope. There is hope, eternal hope, for all of God's children. Amen. And we'll say, there we go. Sometimes I don't know where, how the switch works. <laughs> Let's say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God,
the prayers of the people for this Easter. Is form three. You can find it in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387 or just follow it on the screens. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, David and Rayford, our bishops, Graham, our priest, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to all the departed eternal rest. And that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into glory. Now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those on our prayer list, Scott, Gus and wife, Nancy, Robbie, Summer, Clay, Nan, Margie, Zoe, Efren, Carmelina, Bill, Ellen, Sila, Heidi, Tony, Chris and Kelly, George, Vitaly, Allie, Roman, Jimmy, Gary, Bob and Arbita, Carol, and those we now name. Kurt. For those having birthdays today, this week, Jason Hernandez, Nancy Melton, Clay Mitchell, Ned Bailey, Steve Barossa, Giselle Crawford, and Chuck Kimberly. For those having winning anniversaries, Carol and Leonard Copeland, Meg and Jim Grant, Janie and Alan Peake, Rhonda and Glenn Cunningham. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now let us stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Y'all can be seated. I gave y'all a little bit longer to greet each other because some of y'all hadn't seen each other in a while. So it's great to see you guys. Great to be with you. Welcome. Those of you who are watching on Facebook, our Facebook live stream, uh, welcome. We're glad that you are here. And if you're joining us for the first time, uh, either online or in person, uh, we're really glad that you're here. And in the pew in front of you, if you're in-house, there is a card, a welcome card. You can scan the QR code and fill out the form uh, electronically, and it'll come to us. It's a Google form. Or you can fill out the uh, 
the paper side and you can drop it in one of the offering plates that are there in the middle of the aisle. And thank you guys for putting those out. If you're online, that information, that welcome card is in the comments section of your, uh, of the feed. Uh, thank you guys for everybody to, who brought uh, food today, who helped with the Easter egg hunt, uh, who, you know, sent everything. You know, this is a huge undertaking to make today happen, and I would, I would, I'm just really grateful uh, to all of you who supported uh, today and, and made it happen. I think we owe you a big round of applause. It's wonderful to have some, uh, you know, life coming back and our volunteers coming back, and it's great. It's a great thing. It's a good time to get in on the ground floor, by the way, if you want to be a volunteer. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, let's see. Tomorrow and Tuesday, the church offices will be closed because uh, the staff... Uh, needs a, a good little break. So they're going to get a little break. And then uh, if you'd like to be a part of a, a Wednesday weekday Bible study, we have one that meets at noon on Wednesdays in the Leadership Center next door. Do I have anything else? Theology on Tap. Oh, yeah, that's right. We have a, a, for those of you who are interested in getting together in the afternoon, there is a Theology on Tap once a month on the third Wednesday of every month. They meet over at the door yard. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can find some information online or you can talk to Andy, who's right up here in the second row or any, any of those guys. So it's over at the door yard and um, it's a great opportunity just to get together and talk about stuff and, and enjoy each other's company. Uh, let's see. For communion, how we're going to do this is uh, if you're on this side, You'll come all the way over to this end and fill towards the middle. If you're on this side, you'll start in the middle and come over here. So that's, that's how you'll come and to the rail. And I will start at this corner and do the bread all the way around and then start back around. Uh, Roy and Steve will have intinction chalices. We're still intincting or dipping the wafer in the wine rather than taking it from the common cup. So they'll have those and they'll come by and you can dip your wafer in that cup and you can take the bread and the wine together. When you go back to your seats, if you're on this side, uh, just go back around here behind the music team and you can head back to your seats. If you're on this side, you can kind of go behind the, the pulpit here and back to your seats on that side. If you need me to bring communion to you uh, or to one of your loved ones who you know, can't make it up to the front, just let the, uh, the hospitality ministers know as they come by to release your pew and they will let me know and, and I'll go to you uh, with the communion. Uh, we do offer a gluten-free wafer, so just let me know when you come forward if you need that. I think that's all the information that I need to give you at the moment. Uh, we do do electronic giving here. And so also in your pew is a QR code to the electronic offering plate. There is some instructions on the back side so that you can make your gift electronically if you need to do that. You'll notice down there towards the bottom, there is a text to give feature uh, so that you can do that. So in it, or you can place your offering in the offering plates at any time between now and the end of the service that are in the, there. I think that's all I've got, right? Good, okay. So let's say our offertory sentence together. Jesus said, for the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost.
I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. You may stand or kneel through the remainder of the prayer. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people and your words spoken through the prophets and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. George and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And remembering those who cannot be with us today, who are joining in us online or who cannot attend due to illness. Let us pray with them this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him. The grave could not
Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Keep you safe, make you strong this day and every day of your life. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 182.
idea what's left in the parish hall, but you guys go. There's a lot. Okay. There's a whole bunch of snacks in the parish hall. Y'all go eat and get something on your way to your, to your Easter lunch. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless y'all. Yeah.